Okay, so today we're going to take care of the installation concepts and I'm going to queue this up right now and control L for the full screen. All right, so just here. All right, so this is the, I call this uh, cabling infrastructure installation concepts. All right. Um, I'm going to give you some uh, some ideas on uh, on what you might encounter when it comes to the installations. We took care of the terminations, so that's already when the wires are uh, laid in place. Uh, however, uh, a big part of it, a uh, big part of the installation service calls and whatnot, uh, have to do with uh, actually installing the wiring. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of uh, heads up of what you might uh, what you might be against. Uh, when it's uh, when it comes to installing the, uh, the 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 wiring and devices, right? So here we have um, well, basic kind of a framing idea of what's going on here. Now, um, right off the bat, I'm going to mention that whenever you're going to do the installations, you're going to be up against either uh, timber framing or uh, or steel framing. Okay. Um, there are pros and cons uh, to using both. Uh, uh, for example, the timber framing, it's, it's easier to install the device boxes because you have wooden studs and it's, um, um, they take the screws a little bit better than the steel studs. Uh, all right. Now, this is an example of a timber framing, which is not going to be that much different uh, for our purpose. Uh, well, there's a big difference between timber and steel. Uh, however, for our purpose, for like installing installing the wires, uh, this, there, there are going to be some subtle difference, but there's still going to be some. Right? So this is the basic framing idea of what we uh, what we have uh, what we'll be dealing with. Um, it's a typical wall, and I'm just trying to uh, try to find some picture that would um, that would um, include most of the things that we'll be dealing with. All right. So here on the left side we have the basic basic timber framing all right so what do we have on top we have the uh, the the plates double plate well it's not a metal plate it's a wooden plate and you can see that there are it's a double one all right it's a double plate uh, so that goes into the ceiling all right oops what are we doing here jumping on us mm -hmm. I'm not trying to connect anything here. Where the heck did it jump to? Oh wow, it just went a lot. Sorry about that. There we go. Alright, I'll try not to zoom too much. Alright, so... <clears throat> So we have the headers. Uh, we have something that's uh, RO. Um, it's a, basically it's a construction terminology. You're not going to have to um, know the exact terminology um, for the for the wire pulling. However, it's it's good to know to uh, what you know what you're dealing with, All right? So RO here stands for rough opening. This would be basically for a door. Um, and uh, we have some king studs. So studs will be the horizontal timber pieces right there. Um, and then you have the sole plate, which is the, just like the sole of your shoe. So this is on the bottom. So on the bottom we have a sole plate and we have a head plate on the top. Um, and usually that's a double, a double plate uh, when it comes to dealing with the ceilings and stuff. Because yeah, things are, th things are resting on, on, on that. So, uh, so you need some reinforcements. All right, and over here, you have a studs. You have the studs. Here's a stud. Here's a stud. Usually, they're about 17 inches apart um, when it comes to holding the drywall. Because on top of that, uh, most of the wall is going to be covered with the drywall sheets. Okay, and uh, and um, um, 
over here you have uh, quite often you're going to hear the term uh, something like a horizontal stud okay so in this case it's got internal wall nailer uh, all right so uh, and uh, and if it's just a regular wall with nothing in it uh, no windows no doors uh, sometimes you're going to be dealing with something that's called nodgings it's the same thing it's the horizontal pieces that uh, that uh, that reinforce the whole structure okay uh, now, when it comes to a window right here, um, uh, you would you would have the uh, uh, you would have the seals here, and uh, you would have something that's called cripples. Right? So that all has to do with uh, with installing the wiring. Now there are going to be uh, f when it comes to this type of um, framing, you're going to be dealing with either um, uh, bare framing with no drywall installed. Or you're going to have to deal with uh, with um, situations that you're going to have drywall on top of that. So when you have uh, no drywall, well, it's an easy peasy job, right? You just uh, you know you just go for it and run the wires uh, the the way it will be comfortable for you and uh, and according to the code and um, not much code there, but there's still some. Um, and so, uh, so you know, you know, you're gonna have to drill holes through those studs or through those pieces, because if you run those wires on top of that, if it's going to, those wires are going to be covered with a the drywall, they're going to be squished. So that's not a good. Uh, what I'm showing you here is mostly it's going to be in this case for the security alarm purposes. So if it's a window, let's say this is a window here, you're going to have to install something that's called a door contact. Right? And uh, those are miniature door contacts that can actually go inside a frame. Google sometimes uh, something that's called a miniature door contact, and uh, this is how uh, this is what it looks like. All right now, um, uh, the wire you would either be bringing from the top, from the ceiling, or if it's a first floor, you you would be running the wires uh, in the basement, and you're just going poking through uh, through to, through the uh, through the sole plate. And running those wires for the contacts uh, right to the windows and those miniature contacts the miniature door contacts that are being installed in the windows they can actually be hidden in the window frame so when the window is closed or even open you basically if nobody shows you that the thing is there you won't even see it so it's a very good uh, um, solution for residential when aesthetics are uh, way more important than when it comes to commercial installations uh, aesthetics are important in both commercial and residential however residential some of the aesthetics are, are, are way um, more I would say not important but uh, um, paid attention to all right simply because it's you know somebody's house there in the in, if it's commercial it's an office environment a lot of uh, uh, a lot of things are being done different much easier uh, when it comes to um, install installations uh, in the residential setting, um, you will um, the best thing is the best timing for that is before the drywall is being put in. Um, well, actually, there's the best window of opportunity right after the air ducts are being run and before the drywall is being put in so <clears throat> a little bit of a time pressure on us for, for that uh, for that reason you don't want to run your wires security data or otherwise and the kind of communication wires or electrical as well before the air ducts are being done electrical is a little bit better because uh, the wires are uh, sometimes running in the conduits and whatnot uh, but when it comes to communications wiring, telecommunications wiring, um, you really want to be after the air ducts are being installed, simply because um, um, after you have run your communication wires, when the, uh, when the HVAC people come in, the trades, uh, sometimes it's possible that uh, during that installation for the air ducts and whatnot, uh, your wires might get damaged. Right? And then, in, then the drywallers come over and they cover the whole thing with the drywall. And then you do your testing, then you might find that maybe there are some breaks in some wires or, or something like that. So, um, as I said, the best window of opportunity for us is before the drywall is put in, because um, you know, 
it's easier for us to run the wires. We see everything that's there. If the drywall is put on, every, all that stuff that is here is going to be covered. So you're going to have to do some guesswork. So that's why I'm showing you some of that right now, to, to just to see what you're up against, um, okay? Um, and then you want to be after the air ducts are done, right? So now, when it comes to, um, let's say, for example, this part here, the door, right? If you look at this, here is an example of a door contact. There you go. <laughs> um, here's the door contact, and it's a flash contact. Uh, basically, what it is is that you have the you have the contact. Remember, we were talked about the reed switches, the reed switch, just like the reed in the saxophone mouthpiece that makes a sound. Uh, it's two pieces of something, and then you blow air on it, and it starts vibrating. Uh, so th that's basically what the switch looks like, just like the reed, R E E D, uh, and it, it's a passive device. So it's going to have two wires coming out of it, uh, basically like a switch. And that, this piece here, you're just going to drill a hole. There are some uh, bigger and some smaller ones, all right? So some of the bigger ones would be like a, um, how about a three quarters of an inch uh, hole that you're going to dr drill into the frame of the door. And then you're going to hammer, oh, hammer that in, uh, squeeze that in, and you're going to have to pull the wires somewhere on top. So look at this, uh, you're dealing with, what you're dealing with here you have to drive through this uh, this um, uh, this header plate okay and this is not just a, a piece of wood and it's empty inside this whole thing is packed so it's just like a huge piece of timber and um, you know you're going to have to get uh, some kind of special drill well, longer drill bits so you can just go uh, right through and pull those wires out all right you don't want to drill the, the hole that is too small because uh, sometimes the house uh, moves uh, with time. You don't want that wire to be basically scissored uh, by the timber. So you want to have, a, but you don't. You can't drill too big of a hole, right? So just just so the wire has some wiggle in it. So you would just drive uh, the the hole, drive the drill bit, right through the frame, through the plate, and get the get the wire out of there. And then from from here, you can go either way. You can go sideways and down to the basement and uh, the wires will be directed from there. Or you can go sideways and up into the attic space or ceiling space, uh, and then uh, the wires would be run there. And there's the second part of the, of the door switch, uh, which would be the magnet, all right? So the magnet would be mounted right on the door, yeah? and the switch would be mounted on the door frame. So when the magnet gets close to the switch, when the door is closed, they have to be aligned, and then uh, the switch is going to close, uh, and when the magnet is being away from that, when the door is open, then the switch is going to be, the switch is going to open, right? So that's how the security alarm works, for example, right? Other things that you would be installing there would be, um, uh, this thing is jumping on me today, would be, um, well, uh, device boxes or, or um, jacks for the well, mostly for the Ethernet or some other devices because you could have something that's called a bla uh, bla glass break detector that you could have it mounted on the wall. There are some of those that are flashed or flash. All right, what's a flash? A flash. The idea of something that is mounted flash. Let's say this is a wall. Okay, and this is where people live, all right? And this is a wall, all right? This is a wall. So if you mount a device that is, that is on the wall, like that, for example, that would be something that's called a surface mount, okay? Surface mounted device. Or if you had drill an opening or make an opening here, and you and you put a device that basically is going to align itself with a wall so that would be a flash mounting and whatever the device would be inside so that's a flash mount okay so sometimes you uh, for the uh, for the doors uh, for security alarm if it's a 
here's the top, here's the door frame, and here's the door. You could uh, mount those flash contacts, flash mounted contacts that you just drill a hole here and you just squeeze that in and it's a flash mounted door contact. And over here, uh, you drill another hole and this would be the magnet. So this would be a flash mounted magnet. Okay, so that's the um, uh, you know, differences between um, surface mount and flash mount. So sometimes uh, it is, uh, so the door contacts can be uh, can be uh, flash mounted or surface mount contact as well. Not all of them are flash, some of them are surface mount. Now, when you go to our class uh, and you, there is that main door to our classroom, there are some security contacts that are flash mounted, right? That's a pretty bad job somebody did, <laughs> but it's a good idea, good idea for you to, uh, to, uh, uh, to watch, uh, to, to look at, take a look at. Um, and uh, uh, that would be that would be a what not to do or how not to do it. Uh, it still works, uh, but the, some of the aesthetics could have something to be desired. All right. Uh, so um, so that's uh, that's the idea of uh, of the door frame. Now uh, there are just some references here uh, that I had to include uh, when I um, you can take a look at some of that. All right now. Here's a timber stud partition. Okay, so there's another another type of a wall. So what do we have here? We have the head plate and we have a sole plate. Okay, just so you know the terminology that's that's going on, right? And then uh, uh, in the usually in the timber type of framing, you will have something that's called nodgings. Hmm? Uh, nodgings uh, quite often are referred as to as uh, horizontal studs. Right? Now the problem with that is, well, the, the purpose of that is is for them to to hold the structure to make the structure a little bit stronger. Um, the problem for us is that whenever we drive the wire for either from the top or we drive the wire from the bottom, from the bottom no problem because you would just have it. Uh, 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 maybe a foot uh, above the floor, uh, you would have an Ethernet jack, for example. Okay, so if you grab, if you come from the bottom, you just drill the hole through that, or maybe you could just drill the hole from the top and see where it comes out on the bottom. Always, always make sure that uh, that uh, wherever you're drilling, uh, you just have to make sure what is on the other side. Always, always, always make sure what's on the other side. Are there any electrical wires there? Is there any plumbing that you could go through? Uh, uh, you know, if, if if you're not careful, uh, uh, some of those some of those jobs that would be nice and beautiful and uh, just go out there, do it, and, and you know, and build a client for it. Um, but sometimes, if you're not careful, those jobs can turn into a big nightmare. And um, you know, especially if you drill through some through some plumbing, you know, and all of a sudden you have a water coming down. Uh, on the, you know, uh, so <clears throat> you, you always, always have to make sure what's on the other side when you're drilling, and that sometimes uh, involves a lot of walking and checking and knocking and uh, and all that stuff. Um, um, a nice trick is. Um, if you don't have a, sometimes, oh, sometimes you're going to have um, a drill bit that's maybe a foot long drill bit, right? and maybe it's a quarter inch thick, right, or gauge quarter inch uh, drill bit, about foot long. You take that, or maybe two feet long, and sometimes there are like six feet long drill bits. They're called flex bits. Right, and then you just just drive through the saw plate, right? But now you're gonna make. It, sometimes it's very difficult to just go up the stairs and downstairs, just to kind of because you lose your orientation when you go down the stairs. And where is it? Where is it? Where exactly is that that we're going to uh, uh, to do? Uh, if you don't have a drill bit like that, uh, here's a trick. You get a you know those wired coat hangers. If that's a wired coat hanger, right? See if I can draw a coat hanger here, here, and it goes like this, right? <laughs> All right, it's a coat hanger, right? And these are those wired ones that, uh, you know, uh, so basically what you do, you take your side cutters, you cut it here, and you cut it here, and you have uh, 
a piece of rod and then if you cut it in a rough way so that you have a little bit of a rough edge there and if you straighten it out and if you're careful you can put that in your drill and whenever you are uh, sometimes somewhere uh, here's the top floor here's the basement okay and sometimes you can just drive that thing right by right behind the baseboard and and just start drilling with that straight piece of rod very carefully and this thing is going to come out on the bottom somewhere all right um, this way you can pinpoint where the location is and then you can go from the bottom and uh, you could be comfortable with uh, you know, I guess you could have more space to work with and you can just use another drill bit that's a little bit bigger but you know exactly where to drill and just go from the from from the bottom up all right so that's a bit of a bit of a trick that i'm giving you here yeah. um, now when it comes to uh, i'll show you some other uh ways of, of doing that the problem the, the one of the biggest problem is that uh, uh when you're trying to come you know sometimes you come from the from the bottom so that's okay uh, because you have that space here to work with now when you come from the top there's a bit of a problem because you're going to drill your drill a hole or drill an opening from the top and then what you can you can just take some heavier objects like one of those steel chains and you can tie it to a string and let it down all right and then you can pick it up with a magnet or something if you drill uh, if you if you uh, not drill but if you produce an opening for uh, for a grommet uh for the for the data jack to be there for example data outlet all right but the problem is when you have those nodging so horizontal studs um, when you have those horizontal studs uh your chain is going to get stopped right here and no matter what you do, there is no way you're going to get this thing down to the proper uh, to the proper uh, you know, uh, height. Okay, uh, so there's a bit of a problem. There are ways to get around, uh, and there's always some risk involved uh, when you're drilling through the horizontal stud once the drywall is put in. Right? Uh, so sometimes you can just drill a hole over here on the top. From the top from the from the attic or from the ceiling space if it's a drop ceiling it's even better and you can just push a glass rod and see how far it goes and bang 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 you're going to hit that horizontal stud and there's nothing you can do well not really there is something you can do you can use some that's called a flex bit flex drill bit flexible drill bit that you're just going to reach down right here and drill through that the problem with that is that if you don't position the flexible drill bit just right which is in the middle of that horizontal stud and you have to kind of guess where, you, where, you, where you're hitting if you put it right in the corner guaranteed that this thing is going to go least path of resistance and it's going to come out through the drywall and then you have a patching work to do and maybe some painting right uh, so uh, that's the timber stud. Now, usually it's done in the residential setting and some, uh, uh, some commercial as well. What happens when you have uh, a commercial situation, uh, then um, quite often those, uh, those openings are, those, those, those spaces are open all the way down. Um, there's a chance that if it's a steel stud construction, quite often you are not going to have those horizontal studs. Sometimes you do, but quite often they're open all the way down right, in the commercial situations. If it's, a, if it's a residential installation, almost guaranteed, pretty much 99.9%, .9 you're going to deal with those horizontal studs. So how do we go about them? Right. There are those. Yeah. Here's another nodding installation. Now, remember when, uh, when I talked to you about uh, drilling a hole and maybe uh, tying a chain, metal chain, um, to a string and letting it down, and you can pick it up with a magnet or you can just uh, fish it up with a 
if you don't have anything, just like a piece of wire and make a hook out of it and take it out of there, right? Um, uh, so very seldom you're going to have just empty spaces, especially when it come uh, well when you when you're dealing with the exterior wall you're going to have some insulation as well. So there is no way you can just drop the chain and let, and, and this thing is going to come down all the way down, right? Now, also I'm going to mention something is that uh, when you have the center blocks, right, the, the, those bricks that are opening, and sometimes the openings are aligned so you can just wiggle that chain right down to where it goes, right? But this is the timber installation here, timber, timber framing. Uh, you're going to deal with insulation. So you're going to have to push some glass rods, um, like long sticks, they're about six feet long sticks, uh, and you're going to have to fight through the insulation, and maybe you're going to hit, or maybe you can use the flexible drill bit and, uh, and, and just go and hit that stud here, and hit that stud here, and sometimes it is possible, but it takes a little bit of experience to, uh, to come from here, and drill through that, and drill through another one uh, on top, right? This is the more important one because over here you would see when something comes out. Over here, well, sometimes you're going to see it, but there are ways, of, uh, there are also ways of, of dealing with that, all right? And sometimes I just tell the client, look, um, I don't know what's behind that wall. I, I, I'm sorry, I can't install that device. Would you like a wireless one? How much is it? Well, you know, the door contact, uh, the wired door contact costs you buy them in boxes, so maybe it's going to cost you $5 each. But when it comes to wireless device, it might cost you uh, $100 each. So go, oh, no, you can, how come it's so expensive? You know, we can't afford that. Well, you know, you either get it or you don't, right? So that's, that's, uh, that's for the client to decide. But if you think about it, if you mount a wireless device, yes, the device costs more, but you don't uh, pay for the time to install it. If it's a cheap, well, cheap, not cheap, but it's less expensive wired contact, uh, then you have to spend the money on running the wire. So it comes up pretty much the same thing. And, you know, sometimes the client just has to be explained that, right? Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> uh, so with the exterior walls, you're going to have to deal with the insulation as well, right? I'm just giving you the heads up on what you're going to deal with. Now, here's a typical, uh, typical, um, another, well, another typical situation that you might get into, right? Um, that would be usually common to commercial installations here. Uh, so quite often between the, you know, you're going to have some empty space to run your wires inside the walls. But look, sometimes the drywall is going to be put right against the center block. How do you guess or guesstimate which one it is? Well, you just kind of knock at it a little bit. And if, if you feel that this is an empty wall behind you when you knock, uh, then it's probably an empty wall because there could be some horizontal studs, but uh, you still have some way of running a wire. When it comes to uh, when it comes to the drywall being mounted right onto the center blocks, then well, there is no empty space, so the wire is um, uh, a little bit more difficult to install when it comes to not seeing the wire inside. Uh, in this case, uh, sometimes all you can do is use the wire molding, uh, okay, the surface mount raceway, right? And that's uh, and it's just basically have uh, the last picture. Uh, one of the last photos that I have here, um, there was a drugstore somewhere in Brantford that we used to really install the monitor on the wall and we had to go surface mount for the wiring. There's no way we could get the wire inside. All right, so sometimes you're going to have this, all right, and sometimes you're going to have this. Now also, there's some joists, right? There's some joists on the top, or you could have some joists on the bottom. Uh, it is a good idea to figure out which way those joists are going because if you have the wire coming from here and you need to go down to the further wall, you can use that space to push something, you know, like a glass rod and you can get that wire right across the ceiling to the other side. But if you wanted to go from here to here, right, well, uh, it's a bit more difficult situation, sometimes not that possible because how are you going to run a wire from here to here when you have all those joists in the ceiling going that way or in the floor, right? Um, 
So that's why um, I always suggest when somebody builds uh, uh, with a new construction, when people try to decide uh, what interior to use, I always try to encourage um, uh, drop ceiling, which will be the ceiling tiles that you can pop and you can you can you can put stuff in the ceiling, like wires, for example. Uh, not because it is easier for me to run the wire. It is. It would be easier for me to run the wires in uh, drop ceiling because I just pop the tile, run the wire. Uh, but uh, but the the uh, with today's the way things are uh, these days right now in current times. This is twenty twenty two right now. Um, you never know if you need some more wires for whatever reason. Maybe there's some other devices that you want to install. Maybe some other things are going to have to replace. Um, there's always, we are in the era of communications, of telecommunications. There's always some new wires you're going to have to run at some point or another. So in the basements, try to encourage people to install the drop ceiling. There are some nice decor ones that you can install. And it's just uh, so much more functional uh, other than drywalling the whole thing from top to bottom and left to right. Okay. So, um, uh, no, and then here's that interior wall. So no problem. You can run the wires from here. You can install what you would, you, what would you install here? Well, thermostat devices, you would install uh, security alarm keypads, um, whatever switches uh, and other gadgets right on the drywall here and uh, over here you could get some glass break detectors motion sensors they all need wiring right unless they are wireless but there's nothing uh, if you know if, if it comes to security alarm uh, setting um, there's nothing better than a wired contact because you don't have to worry about the batteries you don't have to worry about the range you don't have to worry about the radio frequencies or whatnot wire is a wire right but sometimes you just have to install the wireless devices and by now, uh, I'm going to have to say that, uh, uh, that the wireless technology has gone good enough to be reliable, to be considered reliable. Uh, typical framing construction that was. Now, here is the flexible drill bit that I was talking to you about. All right. There is that painted over blue thing here. So this will be a wall, a drywall that's put right onto the timber already. So see you have uh, insulation there and you have to uh, and you have to come through that to the ceiling so you can run your you know so you can run your wires uh, with whichever way you have to do. And this would be something that's called a flexible drill bit. Go to the electrical section sometimes in Home Depot, Rona, or Lowe's, or whatever uh, hardware, home hardware um, uh, stores. And usually in the electrical section, you're going to see those flexible drill bits. Um, you see this thing is flexing. So you put the drill on the other side and you hold it. You can hold it with your hand as well. It's, you know, nothing's going to happen. Well, you're just going to have to hold it very carefully. And of course, you're not going to drill like crazy. You're just going to have to uh, be easy on the trigger. But you, you, you do with the feel. Right? And the problem with that, well, the problem to the challenge with this um, would be is that if you do an opening in the drywall and you push that in, uh, chances are better than others that that drill bit the point of the drill bit is going to go right into the corner where the where the timber meets the drywall so uh, when you start drilling that way uh, it's not going to go straight up it's going to take least part of resistance and it's going to come through the drywall so you're going to see the drill, drill bit pop on the other side in the wall right through, through the wall not very not the ideal situation all right so um, uh, those there are popular devices this is the flexible drill bit guide all right you kind of clamp it on and it and it just it kind of guide it a little bit that way so the drill bit goes a little bit towards the middle of the stud and you can you can feel that when you guide it you can you can feel the tip of it hitting a corner or another corner so you just go right in the middle and then you start drilling and of course they have a screw tip uh, uh, screw point tips 
so uh, so this uh, when you start pushing on it this thing can slightly bite into the timber and uh, it's not going to slide on you uh, so you can just go right through the uh, you know uh, right through the timber not through the drywall okay so these are called flexible drill bits or sometimes they're called flexed bits um, so that's when it, when it comes to pretty much any of the walls something to consider is the exterior walls it's a very important that the vapor barrier is not disturbed when you're running wires through the um, you know inside the exterior walls what's an exterior wall it's a wall that uh, basically on one side of the wall there's the inside of the house and then the other side of the wall there's outside <laughs> right? so that's external wall if it's you know as opposed to internal wall that uh, just divides two rooms inside of the house okay? uh, what we have to consider is something that is uh, that's called the vapor barrier so there's going to be some insulation and there's going to be some plastic sheathing right there that's going to look uh, it's going to work as a vapor barrier What's a, you know, what's, what's a vapor barrier? It's, it's, it's slowing down the passage of the air from inside towards outside, so the condensation is not happening um, as much. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to stop, of course, because uh, you know, it's supposed to stop the, the air from traveling inside and out, but it's got to have some permeability. Right? Now, the permeability is something that you already have heard before, and it had to do with the magnetizing or demagnetizing uh, materials, right? So uh, permeability, magnetism is one thing, but now we're talking about permeability, uh, the physical permeability of an uh, exterior wall, all right? So the permeability of exterior wall has to do with how, uh, what is the, um, the, of the, of the easiness of the air being passed through. So um, uh, we want to stop the air from traveling inside, outside, or outside, inside, but we don't want to stop it the whole way, right? The, the, the house has to, it's called breathe a little bit, because if you, if you completely stop it, it's also not good uh, for whatever construction reasons, and some of the construction people will tell you a bit more about that. The, for us, what's important for us to know is that there is going to be a vapor barrier. So it's going to be insulation and some plastic sheathing uh, that uh, is going to coat the whole thing here. And then on top of that, there's going to be a drywall. What, need, what we need to know is that we are not supposed to disturb it. And if we disturb it, we got to fix it in the right way. Right? And there is some huge reasons for that. Exterior wall. That's what the exterior wall would look like inside a house or a building. Right? So what do we have here? Here's one exterior wall. We are in the corner and there's another exterior wall. You can see a window actually here. Right? So on this side there's an inside and on the other side will be outside of the building. So there's some insulation uh, being placed there. And over here is a plastic sheeting and everything is nicely sealed, right? So there is no condensation happening between the vapor barrier and the wall. And if we have that, uh, if, we, if we allow the condensation happen, how do we allow that? If we make a hole in that thing, if we disturb that, then we're going to have an opening and the condensation is going to, there's going to be some condensation happening there and that is really, really bad. How bad? no good type of bad right we'll talk about that in a couple seconds so when you have when you mount the devices yes you're going to disturb that vapor barrier but you're going to have to reseal it using some like tuck tape t-u-c-k tape uh that's the red tape that you can you can see pretty much any hardware store and you know, they sell them by rolls so if you disturb it you fix it with that right if you may if you mount any jacks uh, or devices on the exterior wall, you fix that. You make sure that the, the whole thing is resealed. Okay. How do we how do we go about that? All right. So there's something that, there's something that's called a poly pan. It's a plastic uh, plastic 
gadget, all right? Uh, that uh, that basically once you make that opening, you put that in, you reseal it with the tuck tape, and reseal the whole opening over there where the wires are going. So the whole thing that's that you have the device, like for example, duplex receptacle here, but you can have other things, something like you know, such as uh, data jacks or whatnot or a doorbell or whatever, you have to put that inside the poly pan, all right? And that's, that, that thing has to be resealed. That's what it looks like. Here is the poly pan, all right? And on top of that, there's going to be the, um, um, the vapor barrier sheathing right there. And, um, uh, and that's how we basically install the devices, uh, whatever it might be, on the exterior wall. You don't need to install those on the interior walls because in the interior walls, unless there is some kind of a special case for whatever reason, usually they don't require a vapor barrier. So that's the installation of the poly pans. That's what they look like. All right, what happens if you don't? Well. If you don't, this happens. All right. It's not going to happen overnight, but it's going to happen maybe within a year or two or three. Uh, it's a mushroom. You're going to grow mushrooms. Uh, I like eating mushrooms, but not this type of mushrooms. This is called a black mold. Black mold is bad. Right. In fact, when when you see something like that, when you enter a building and you see something like that, uh, there's one thing you can do. And that thing would be, get out. Do not breathe anything that's there, right? Do not breathe the air that's there. Just get out. Turn around and get out. Uh, you know, and definitely don't, don't do any work that's there. This thing has to be taken care of. It's either the walls have to be knocked down and new walls being put in, or maybe there's some other ways that, uh, that, uh, that the construction people would know how to do, and there are some ways, but it has to be professionally taken care of. Do not work in there. This is what happens when you disturb the vapor barrier and you don't reseal it properly. Mm -hmm. And there are some signs of the um, black mold happening there. So on the outside, it might look like that. When you when you take the drywall off, that's what it looks like. Bad thing. Do not go there. And there uh, and some. Just so you know, some of the dangers that you're, you can be up against. Uh, the most common black mold symptoms and health effects are associated with the respiratory response. It's going to attack your lungs, right? Chronic coughing, sneezing, irritation to the eyes, uh, mucous membranes of the nose and throat, rashes, chronic fatigue, and persistent headaches can be symptomatic of the black mold exposure or black mold poisoning. Right? It's not just when you are there. If when you're there, you can definitely almost count on that. You're going to experience that. And... Uh, thing is that when you once you get out it doesn't stop right so don't get exposed in particularly severe cases uh, prolonged exposure to black mold uh, black mold health effects can be more dangerous often uh, compounded by allergic reactions to the black mold spores uh, these symptoms can include nausea vomiting and bleeding in the lungs and nose right um, so uh, it is extremely important that we know what the vapor barrier is, and it's extremely important that we know how to, if we disturb it, we know how to reseal that thing, okay? There are uh, some, okay, there will be the black mold hazards, okay, that, that thing goes to the top over there, all right, that title there. Uh, exterior walls give okay so this is uh, you can you can read a little bit more on uh, what the exterior walls so, you know I'm not going to read that the whole thing you know this is just a basic definition of what exterior wall is um, <clears throat> and there's uh, there's a little bit of a synopsis on uh, one uh, about the vapor barrier what the purpose of that is 
And here is the, remember the permeability when it comes to this type of a thing, it's the state or quality of a material or membrane that causes it to allow liquids or gases to pass through it. So it's how much it allows, the permeability tells us how much, whatever it is, how easy or how hard is the measure of passing through the gases or liquids or whatnot in uh, uh, the permeability that you might have known already by studying the magnetism or the electrical machines, it would be how easy the material can pass the magnetic field. All right. Do we have time? No, we don't for the second part. We're going to take over for the second part. We're going to uh, go through some of the installation stages. I don't want to rush through it. Uh, because if somebody wants to go into this business, uh, by all means, talk to me. I'll give you more. This is I'm just going. I'm I'm just giving you the almost like a tasting platter or what we might be getting into. All the other stuff is the experience, exposure to the job, uh, working with somebody else that already knows how to do the job. You're not going to be thrown in the water and thought you know and told that you have to swim. Um, when you get when you get to work, you're most likely you're going to be put together as a team with somebody who already is doing this job. So you're going to have a chance to observe and learn on the job. I'm giving you a heads up what to pay attention to. Okay, so um, next time we see each other, we're going to take care of the uh, common installation stages uh, and uh, the stuff that is associated with stuff and things that are associated with that. Uh, so for today, this is it. We need to take care of the second part. Uh, what is it? Wednesday or Thursday? Something like this. something like that. Okay, cool. So this is it for today, and I will see you next time. Have a good day. Thank you, guys.